After traveling to Kunai and taking up the task of pacifying the roaming bandits terrorizing the region, Naruko found herself running an increasingly military operation. She was spurred on by the high quality of the hostile war parties they were hunting, many of which included former samurai among their number. She heightened yet further the training of her troops, aided now by veteran swordsman Kajiro. But more notably, she distinguished her female followers from the rest of the party. Although the use of women as common soldiers was not unheard of at the time, Naruko had a more traditional use in mind. Keep whatever weapons you have for now. We'll find you something better soon enough. The important thing is that you stay safe until your training is complete. I owe you my life already, Naruko Dano. I'll gladly put it on the line if you ask. But I don't ask. You'll do more for us at my side. I am honored, my lady. Trying to put me out of a job, are you? What are you blabbering about this time? This honor guard you're pretending not to be making? Only so much bodyguarding I can do for you now you've gone old school on me. <laughs> Well, how about this? You can be the leader of the Honor Guard. Ugh, no way. I know how this goes. Two months in and there'll be nothing more than glorified handmaidens. I think I'd rather keep a healthy proximity to the bad guys. You think I have need for handmaidens? I'm almost offended. These women are going to be my elite warriors, and set the same example to the samurai that you and I do. Oh, I get it. It's not that you want to get rid of me, it's that you can't get enough of me and want to hire more of the same. <laughs> yes, why don't we say that's the case? In that case, I'll be happy to lead them. I think the world will come to fear the strength of Mary and her maidens more than silly Bishop Monten. Just don't be too harsh on them, okay? Remember the new girls aren't exactly lifelong rogues like their brave captain. Ah, yes, innocence. I have ways of dealing with this. Poor girls. Welcome back to Naruko's Treasure, where I'm doing a bit of organization for my forces. You can divide your party into various platoons. I was using the default one of splitting it into infantry and ranged before, but now I'm creating a third platoon of guards, which is going to contain the Onobushi, the female warriors that can be trained up from peasants who volunteer to join your party. And on that note, I spotted that there were some peasant women being held captive by this small band of deserters, so I decided to go and challenge them. And here we can see the guards gathering around me as the other two platoons line up in front to engage the enemy. Enemy attacking through the sun, almost impossible to see them, but luckily enough managed to spot one in the distance and finish them off. An easy victory against an insignificant opponent for us there. So we're going to be rescuing various prisoners from them, and I'm going to take on the peasant woman with them into my party and let the others go. So now, my actual goal at the moment is to try and find the base of the Kenai rebels. So searching for that, I decided to start moving west. I'd already checked to the east and I actually saw it across that river. So I found it pretty much straight away. Nice and easy, some rebels between me and the base. But as I come over and cross the river, they're going to get out of the way. I also had to pass by the Ikoiki rebels, but because they are more organized, they're an official faction, they will not attack me unless I actually uh, present some sort of threat to them so I can move through their territory just fine. I'm going to arrange my party slightly to give me a better chance of having some gun troops before I make my attack because I'm thinking of using the same strategy we use against the pirate hideout of having lots of ranged units in order to take down the enemies. So we come and make the attack. It says something about attacking through sea cliffs there, but then the map is just in the middle of some kind of farm, so I'm not sure what it's talking about. But my first move is going to be to hide behind this building with all of my troops so we can start sizing up the situation. We can see we've got various gunners, but two guys with spears. It sort of takes the guys from the top of your party, but I think it picks a few at random as well, so you can't totally decide who to bring on these little raids of bases. So I'm not seeing anyone firing back at me, which is what I'm testing right now. It seems the Kenai Rebels, who we've seen before, don't have many ranged units, don't have any here either. 
meaning we're going to be really safe to actually attack from range using Naruko's musket and even I can move close to make sure we actually get the hits because I was only engaging at really long range previously because of returning fire so without that returning fire we're safe to make sure we always hit with each shot for maximum efficient use of the ammunition. As I get a little bit closer to their complex though a couple of them actually decide to come outside not all of them so that's fortunate it's very nice to just take these guys on one by one. First one falls to a musket shot the second one comes out and we're going to do some sword fighting with these guys going to test how good they are in melee combat luckily Naruko is extremely good with the sword so it's unlikely to be a problem but when a third enemy came out I thought this actually could be dangerous if they gang up on me I'm going to move backwards and I noticed that these enemies can't even see the rest of my party so we can effectively ambush them here I cut down one of them and the other two immediately start backing away they realize what's going on here I pull out my musket which is going to threaten them enough to charge at me to try and stop me from loading it but as I move backwards my party will suddenly have line of sight on the enemy so now all I need to do is block their shots which is relatively safe to do you can block all day long while my party load up their weapons to try and cut these guys down they're not being particularly fast about it but finally they cut that second enemy down so a sneaky ambush not all that effective so to take out the rest I think we need to do something more direct I'm guessing those were your three bravest men. What a shame you must all feel right now. I'll let you surrender if that's what you prefer. I'll show you the meaning of pain. And there goes another one. Any more? I've plenty of shot and my sword arm is all warmed up now. What are you doing? Get out there and kill that hag before I kill you myself. Three more challenges. Wait, make it two. Do you want a hand up there? Not yet. Going to give them a fair chance to show me what they've got. Just want it. Oh, there's another. Overflowing with bravery, these rebels. I never thought you such a braggart, my lady. Yes, well, I've had some bad influences. He looks right at me, narago chan What have you been telling him? Nothing the gods will judge to be false. You chat with your scum companions even while you fight. I'll savor my time with your corpse. Ah, uh, yes. The thing about that is... I'm just that good. <sighs> right, who's next? I ordered the rest of the team to move up and join me as we moved a little closer to the entrance to the enemy's compound. And then by walking up to the walls and peeking inside, I drew some of the enemy to come out and meet us. I've told my team to hold their fire. What we're going to try and do is blast the enemy away when they get to close range to make sure we have absolute accuracy. I ordered them to fire, cutting down the first enemy. The second one, though, obviously wasn't targeted by them, but of course, I can simply cut him down myself. You can see Kajiro there with his huge Nodaichi two-handed sword. Very deadly looking weapon. Now, I ventured up to have a look inside the compound and pretty much nothing seemed to be going on. I saw a few more of the rebels standing in the distance there took a careful aimed shot hit one of them but it didn't kill them but it did stir him and his companion to start coming over to see what was going on looked like I had plenty of time to reload so I'm just going to wait here while I call my companions up to stand in the doorway now to make sure that no rebels can come outside. We can effectively ambush them if they try to escape. But as I cut one down, two more suddenly appear and then a third on the right. It seems the enemy have spawned right next to where I was sitting. Very unfriendly on them. So now I have to suddenly fight these guys in melee and my team's in trouble. Luckily, Kijiro slices one down with his Nodaichi and this skirmisher as well going to work on the enemy. And with me coming in with these quick sword thrusts as well, we're able to cut down all three without any harm to our own party so that's good they also notice that someone has spawned on a watchtower further along the compound i sneak over and take a carefully aimed shot to knock them down so after that little surprise hopefully there aren't too many enemies left they decided i'll have to go and take another look around the place as i came through the door it turned out there was one standing right there <laughs> had to duck away as he fired at me with his musket i could simply shoot back and cut him down so a quick search revealed there were a few more in the back corner of the base but at a distance we were able to destroy them without them actually realizing what was going on or even responding to the attack and the entire base was now taken without any harm to our party 
across the whole thing. A perfect attack. And now we're going to enjoy all of the loot we're going to be taking from the base. The first order of business will be to take that loot back to Kyoto, where we can start selling it among the various merchants. And I made quite a lot of money doing this. By the time I was done emptying my inventory, I'd made around 4,000 mon, which was fantastic. So much money, in fact, that I started thinking we might want to invest in another business to start reducing our weekly costs. I've got enough to buy some of the less profitable businesses right now, and if I make some more money off the Rebels, we might be able to get another expensive dye works. Before I can do that, I had to find the Guildmaster. Luckily, it wasn't too difficult to track down. He was just waiting at the end of the main avenue in town. Almost accidentally kicked him because I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> but anyway, we can now talk to him and see if there's anything he wants us to do for the town to improve our reputation with the town. We do need five reputation before we can do anything in terms of buying a business. And he actually says that bandits have been ambushing people at night and wants us to volunteer to basically fall into their trap and then fight our way out out of it in order to destroy those bandits. Narako, confident in her own abilities to destroy bandits, of course, is going to accept that. So now we have our party wait it at the inn until nightfall, and then Narako goes out into the street to find these guys, and as expected, they do try and mug her in this empty street. But of course, they are going to have a lot of trouble because she is very heavily armed. She whips out a gun and cuts down one of them. I was looking behind me because I thought there might be more coming to surround me. It seems strange that they would attack from so far away. They duck into a side alley to confer, apparently, and then come back out, deciding that they are going to actually attack me. One of them's armed with a sword, one with a kunai, much less deadly. I have to take down the sword guy first. The kunai guy actually does get a hit on me, but it does zero damage thanks to my armor, and we're easily able to cut those two guys in an instant. So, the bandits are defeated. We're able to salvage 150 mon from them, so that's handy. And now, of course, we can go back to the guildmaster, report to him that our reverse trap was successful, and apparently there was a bounty of 150 mon as well so we're able to claim that so nice little earner and it's improved our reputation with the town slightly starting to get a little bit known around town for our actions so after leaving great lord miyoshi still hadn't returned to kyoto which was what i was waiting for really so we can report that we've defeated the rebels i went to one of the miyoshi lords lord hosokawa here and asked him where great lord miyoshi actually was hosokawa noting that he had heard of us before because we were so violent interesting just like great lord miyoshi has turns out he was actually just following Hosokawa so we could very quickly come and meet up with him. He's very happy that we've taken on those rebels and taken them down, but that's not all he has to say. So then, perhaps we can talk on the matter I previously brought up. In private, I assume. So you consider your job done? Kill 20 drunk guards in an old hideout and come back saying that the rebels have been eliminated. I think you'd rather need to take a broader look at the picture. But my lord, you specifically asked us to destroy their base, and that's what we have done. Well, there is another. We heard just yesterday of a rebel stronghold in the region. Can hardly pass by a village without someone begging me to hunt them down. I tell them that I've got someone on it already, but it seems that someone is now willing to leave the people to fend for themselves. My lord, I... well, I... I never said that was what I wanted. Most mercenary commanders would be grateful to have continuing work. I suggest you act more faithfully like the person you are claiming to be and do the same. Destroy the rebels entirely. And then, do not seek me out in the field, but in Kyoto. Only there will I listen to your questions. But rest assured I will answer, no matter their content. Okay, yes. Thank you, my lord, for trusting us again. We will not fail you. Superb. Until then, Narako of the Thousand Widows. Onward! Sounds like you've been played, my lady. I know, I know. I just didn't know what to say. The big guy was right, though. Steady work, lots of loot to be had still. That's what the men are happy about. Yes, I have some uses in mind for money also. If we buy shares in the Kyoto Guilds, it will increase the Miyoshi clan's faith in our good intentions and make our company all the more secure. And for what it's worth, my lady, I think the people really do need our help. Oh, of course, of course. That goes without saying. 
A little while later, I realized I needed to level up Kijiro. I didn't have anything in mind for what I wanted him to contribute to the party. Right now, he's just a warrior, which is all well and good. But I decided that actually, if I trained him up in tactics, that might be a nice complement to his fighting skills. Tactics, only occasionally useful. We'll see if it comes in handy at any point and then explain what it actually does. For Nariko as well, I needed to make decisions about how she was going to develop. I was a little bit annoyed that her leadership was so low, considering how useful that's going to be. But it's a lot of investment to actually increase leadership because you have to boost your charisma first which doesn't really help for anything else so instead I'm going to continue down the path of making her more intelligent to get more intelligent skills because they are pretty much always useful so the next mission is to try and find the rebel base that Great Lord Miyoshi seems to believe exists. Along the way we'll take fights with all of these small bands of Kinai rebels that are about the land, only really held back by the fact that the terrain across Kinai can occasionally be quite bad for a fight, like in this particular battlefield. The upside to that I guess is that the enemy formation gets really broke up when it comes towards us, and because the Kinai rebels tend not to employ missile troops, we can have a really easy time in most of these fights by just bombarding them with arrows as they advance towards us across this rough ground and barely any of them ever survive to make it to our line so the fights are very easy and often just end up with me and Mary going out on horses to try and find survivors out there and cut them down so that the battle can come to an end and of course every time we do this we're going to get some nice loot as well here's another fight where one last enemy looked like he was going to escape but didn't want to have to ride after him decided to do another test of sharpshooting skill by firing through that tree at the silhouette on the horizon and was actually able to hit somehow, bringing this battle to an end as another victory with absolutely no damage to our own side. Fantastic news. That fight was pretty much right next to the fight we saw just a moment ago. So after that, I needed to move on from this area, having discovered that the base is not here, and started moving back towards the road and the Asakura domain. and actually discovered the hideout quite near the road, a very easy to find place in retrospect. So that's good to know. Now I've noted here that I have 58 days to attack the base before Great Lord Miyoshi gives up on us. And I wanted to, before I do that, actually try and farm a few rebels to get some more money. But first, I spotted Miyoshi himself fighting with the Asakura. I rushed over, hoping to take part in the fight in order to win his favour, but he'd already won by the time I arrived. So that's a shame. If I'd been a bit faster, that would have been a great opportunity to get some more reputation with the Miyoshi. Now, I discovered a monk rebel band. The fact that monk rebels are in the area means there's almost certainly another rebel base nearby, and this party is much bigger and uh, much more well equipped than the Kanai rebels in terms of their distribution, in that they have guns and naganatas and swords, all sorts of different types of troop. I had some decent terrain there, I was able to set up on a hill and bombard the enemy before the fight started. Now I went out on horseback to find that some enemies were already routing and the rest of them mostly just ignoring me which is different to what usually happens but didn't make a difference to, to the actual outcome because the enemy just got cut down by our missile fire before they could reach our line just like usual so even against a large band of 40-ish there our skirmish line is so powerful it seems that uh, nothing can actually overcome it at this stage. Now I went to go and steal some of my loot and was unfortunately ambushed by bandits. This time it's no reverse trap it's just a regular old trap and we're in it managed to cut down the archer at the back there. A swordsman comes in slashing wildly. We're both slashing wildly at each other actually, not doing much damage here. I need to try and focus. I'm a little worried though because normally there are more than two enemies. You can see I'm looking around here because at any second an enemy could just appear behind me coming out from any number of the alleys that are all over the place. So after killing that guy the encounter doesn't end so there are definitely more enemies out there. I'm wondering where they're going to come from. So many possible directions that I decide to just go and put my back up against this wall here so at least there are now fewer directions I can be approached from while I load up my tepo. An arrow flies past and we see an enemy there on the left emerging from that courtyard. So we try and dodge the arrows and then quickly fire while he's reloading to avoid any shots from him and that actually brings the encounter to an end. We steal a little bit of money from them as compensation and now I really can go to market and start selling off my goods, giving myself another nice thousand mon in the bank, getting very rich. So hopefully we'll be able to invest in businesses in Kyoto very soon. We need to spend some of that money at the inn in order to enhance our reputation first. Now I headed north west and spotted another moderate band of monk rebels doing its thing. Still not sure where their base is and not really going to look for it since we're focusing on the Kinai rebels here but I will take them down when the opportunity presents itself and this time I put my skirmish line on the front with some superb terrain and just experimented to see whether we could absolutely annihilate them without even using our infantry to screen them or anything like that. 
I myself went to the back of the enemy's formation, only a few of them followed me, and most of the guys who did follow me were immediately cut down by my skirmishers, and by the time I've moved back over to my line, they finished off the rest. They absolutely dropped the enemy force with no mercy. There goes the last guy. No time for me to even engage in melee, so I'm not even required. I could just stand at the back and we would just win. Fantastic performance from our skirmish line. So no casualties, plenty of loot, another great engagement. Went over to a nearby village, of course looking for iron, and found that they had been infested by bandits. And as we usually do when we find this, we're going to try and help the village out. Our men very happy to do this, even though we're not going to get any money or loot from it. The bandits inside are actually pretty badly equipped. None of them seem to have armor, many of them armed with only short weapons as well. Meaning we have a pretty decent chance, even just the peasants on their own would have a decent chance here. Going to move in front of the line to see if the bandits will uh, come towards me instead of the line, but they did not. So then I ordered the line to just charge, because I believe we have such an advantage here. Let's just finish them off, take them by surprise, smash them to pieces just before they arrive. And it pretty much works. Our men advance forward and cut the enemy down without any problem. Most of the enemy already having been killed by the ranged units before they ate. They approached and we are going to allow the village to keep any reward they might have given us in order to enhance our own reputation and honor so that's fantastic news but no iron that's the bad news not long later, while I was scouting ahead of the baggage train on patrol, we encounter a monk rebel and some Seto pirates, and they are outraged by the fact that we've seen them doing whatever they are doing, and suddenly they come at us to kill us. There's some sort of glitch, and I think whoever would have normally been with me at this stage, like Mario Kajiro, was not here. Usually it gives you a companion to help in these fights. We cut down a guy coming at us with a Naginata, but now there's a load of archers firing at us, and you can see I have no health as a result of damage taken in a few recent fights that I didn't show. So now I need to get in close to these enemies to engage them in melee. That's the first stage. And now I need to not take hits in melee. And that's a terrible start. I get hit by a dagger, losing basically all of my health. I must have about one or two hit points at this stage. Anything would kill me. We managed to cut down another archer, but there's a additional archer still firing. Luckily, he misses all his shots. We come in close, and then he misses with his melee swing. We're able to quickly counterattack right onto his head, cutting him down in one swipe some really negligible loot but at least we got away from that little encounter alive and that's what matters so now we'll have to heal up before we continue went back to kyoto to visit the inn and spend some more money which enhances our fame around town but on the way we were accosted by a belligerent drunk what are you doing here get out woman excuse me listen to me listen to me hag go back to your drink sir you think you could just talk to me? You should be on your knees. You don't deserve a roof over your head. Get out! And what if I refuse? You... You'll have your lights knocked right out of you. Come on then. You ready? I'll floor you right now. Is that so? You wish to lay a hand on Nariko of the Thousand Widows? What? Your, your Nariko? Yes, here on business for Great Lord Mayoshi. One false move, and you'll be wishing you were dead already. Uh, I didn't mean anything by it. Look, go on, I'll make room. In fact, I'm going. Uh, thanks for the chat, my lady. Uh, have a great night. <laughs> a shame. I think his wife would be glad to have been a widow this evening. No doubt. But I just washed myself off. <laughs> Quite reasonable. Well, what can I do for you, Lady Nariko? Take this purse. A thousand mon, if you wish to count it. Yours to keep on one condition. Anyone who mentions Nariko of the Thousand Treasures when they order tonight gets whatever they wish for free. Understood? Most generous of you, my lady. I won't ask where you got all this, but I can tell you now you'll be making a fair few friends tonight. Glad to hear it. Oh, and one last thing. If a woman named Mary comes in, don't apply my offer to her. She'll take you for far more than a thousand mon- Naraka chan there you are. Kodjkun's getting us a table. Hey, why is everyone looking at you funny? Just outside Kyoto, I noticed there was a battle between the Ikoiki forces and the Asakura clan. The Ikoiki were winning this conflict, but I decided to step in on the side of the Asakura because, although the samurai lords aren't exactly the most peaceful folk, the Ikoiki take their use of violence to the next level, so it seems like a worthy cause to step in and try and keep them out of Kanai. 
so I need to aid the Asakura clan forces, but as you can see, the small amount of men they have left decide to rush forwards, eager to engage with the superior enemy, so I was forced to follow closely behind them with my men to make sure they didn't get out of range so we can still support them. Naruko using her sharpshooting to uh, tilt the balance ever so slightly, but we're going to need more than that. I need to bring up my skirmish line to rain some arrows on the enemy as well, so I'm doing just that right now, whilst also taking more pot shots. And I can ride in to try and distract the enemy, the Asakura, in trouble with only about five melee troops rushing in against the enemy lines. I, though, can move forward to engage the enemy to help. That spearman gets a huge hit on me, smashing my chest plate with the spear. I lose most of my health, managed to shrug it off and keep riding though, come back around to take him down on the second pass. I order all forces I have available to charge into the enemy now as a fight begins. My arrows already making a big contribution to the fight. Naruko and Kajira riding in quickly to join the battle as well. And the enemy soldiers, mostly distracted by the fight going on around them, don't put up much of a fight when I ride in to attack them myself. And so very, very quickly we bring the battle to an end and it seems that at least some of the Asakura clan forces managed to get away with that very dangerous dangerous charge. Only two of them actually killed, so that was lucky for them and if we hadn't helped it certainly wouldn't have gone that way and we've managed to build our relations with the Asakura clan as a result. Three peasant women rescued from the Iko Iki volunteered to join our band and we've taken one of the enemy prisoners so we can ransom him off in a town. And speaking of going to town, I've just spent the last thousand mon that I need to sufficiently build my reputation in Kyoto so that the guildmaster is willing to let me buy a business. Now you Usually the best option is to go for the 16,000 mon dye works, but here it seemed the local markets meant I would actually make a loss if I did that, so instead I'm going to purchase this lacquer works for 8,000. Not quite as profitable in theory, but actually it was the only business that was going to make any money according to their predictions. The economic turmoil in the area is uh, sufficient that no industry can actually go on. Now, along the same lines, I went to Nara to perform odd jobs for the guildmaster, and here he wanted me to bring some cattle to market at Kyoto, an easy task, upgrading those peasant women who I discovered into Onobushi, thanks to the training that both Nariko and Mari has been giving them every night. On the way, though, I encountered some traders being attacked by the Iko Iki once again, so I decided to step in to try and save these guys. It was a river crossing battle, so the first thing I needed to do was rush forward and secure the bridge itself. The enemy, though, were quite slow to actually get down to the bridge, so we had lots of time to do this and it proved quite easy, especially with our skirmishers harassing the enemy the whole time. One, though, came across the river at a fording point and almost kills Mary. Had to come up behind and slash him down. Mary, completely oblivious to the danger, it seems, so very silly of her. But anyway, this battle is now won. <sighs> Surrender or die! A samurai offers surrender only to those he will enslave. I'm no samurai, and no he either. You're a samurai through and through. You fight for them, wear their clothes, take their coin. You're just another master of whips, exploiting the people. And what of you? Is raiding villages and attacking merchants, not exploiting the people? Not when they support a regime of falsehood. Not when they block others from walking the true way. Not when my family goes hungry so that their lords can have twice their fill. I welcome death above a life in your world! That's the last of the bastards. We're safe. The war party roaming Kinai gained quick fame among the local villages and samurai families, and its leader doubly so. The profits of banditry were being funneled directly into the hands of Naruko and her band, Taken as fair spoils of war, there was no concern for returning anything to its original owners. As a result, Nariko became sufficiently rich to shower the people of the capital with handouts and bought up one of the few remaining workshops that could turn a profit. Her wealth and ownership of industry made her a far more easy fit into the nobility she was attempting to win the support of. But at the same time, her martial successes meant that the soldier who had given her a sermon on the battlefield was right she was becoming harder and harder to distinguish from a samurai lord. Thanks for watching. We'll get a chance to win Great Lord Mayoshi's favour even without having to storm that bandit lair on the next episode of Nariko's Treasure.